Why, good afternoon, South Africa. But as of yesterday, I feel like we should probably say good evening, South Africa, and welcome to Afternoon Express. I'm Danilo Acquisto. It is the weekend, and I cannot tell you it couldn't have come any sooner uh, for me particularly, and I hope it has been for you. I hope it's been a good week. You're keeping nice and warm. I see everyone in Cape Town's had rain this entire week, so I hope that you're curled up nice and warm in front of the TV this afternoon. So today on the show, because it's the weekend, we're kicking it off in style. We've got a man in the loft today who started his career way back to sort of where I started my career, on children's TV. TV. Do you remember that guy from Yo! TV back in 2004, DJ Switch? He's here in our loft with us today. This man has had an international b-boy career. He's worked with some of the best of the best and really has a passion for growing brand new talent. He's here with us in the loft and we'll hear more of his story later on. And then because it's the weekend, we need a bit of a laugh. Why don't we? We've got Justin Ray Stoffels in the loft with us today, one of the upcoming comedians who's going to be breaking into the industry and really making it uh, go sky high. He's in the loft with us today. We'll chat to him and have a few laughs with him later on right here on the show. I also heard that there are two Madame's on the show today. Thanks, Danilo. So they say that the kitchen is the heart of the home. And today in Winner Home, we're going to get the very first view of our contestants' kitchens. Can't wait to see that. And of course, we are making breakfast. Yes. What exactly is a Madame Croc? Well, Madame Croc would be a female crocodile. So <laughs> no, did they? You didn't. <laughs> so okay, did you're they... going to have to stop hanging out with, with Danilo. <laughs> I have to represent. Exactly. So today we're making a croc madame. Okay, yeah. what is a croc madame? So it's basically a really good cheese and ham toasted yeah. sandwich with white bechamel sauce topped with a fried egg. Otherwise, the way I said to you, what is a croc madame? You're supposed to go, it's a lady crocodile again. Oh. <laughs> Okay. Now, Morgan van Staten, better known as DJ Switch, started his career as a break dancer in a crew called Static B-Boys. He was a Yo! TV presenter from 2004 to about 2008, and now he has established himself as one of the top DJs in South Africa. He's open for the game Drake, 50 Cent and Dead Mouse, and his latest collaborative effort, Now or Never, features appearances from a, some of SA's top rappers. Now instead of passion, level is trash to get the cash in. Question I'm asking, did it die with the veterans back then? What does it live? Residing inside irrelevant has been like the probe of dude. But I know the truth, that's why I jump in the vocal pool to show the youth how to mold the truth into multiple quarter bulls, but sold in the food, using flow as a tool, heads and rolling my school. I show and I prove just how the oldest dude is still the coldest too. Damn. Yeah. Ladies and G's, Switch with us in the loft today. What's up? Hi, I'm good, thanks. Good. How are you? Good, man. I'm very well. So we bumped into each other at the airport on the way uh, to the show today. And it was really exciting to see you because you've really grown so much. You and I both started on children's yep. TV. And look where you are, man. It's <laughs> well, amazing. We're meeting again, so that's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about growing up, dude. Because yeah. I've always wanted to know. Atlantis has got one of the most beautiful like sort of arenas with the dunes. And everyone knows it for, for that vibrant yeah. culture there. There's also a lot of violence going on in, in yeah. Atlantis too. What is your upbringing like? Um, you know, just, you know, taking it back, I think, you know, uh, my mom just wanted to jump a ship mm. before it got bad. And, you know, she made, she made the move, you know, to move, you know, from Cape Town up to Joburg. And I think she just had a bigger vision for, you know, obviously her two sons. I got an older brother. His name is Colin. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, she just wanted to see uh, us growing up, well, not the same way, but a better life. So she pretty much paved the way for us. Sure. And uh, she made the right decision, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Parents have always got this thing. They want to leave their kids in a better position sure. than they had their lifestyles yeah. too, which I think is really hard work for a parent to be able to go and do that. And, and your mom managed, and she's produced this incredible gem. But let's talk about some of the struggles that you face growing up, yeah. because a lot of youngsters see hip-hop stars, they see the money, they see the girls, they see the fame, um, but a lot of hip-hop stars have got deep-rooted, like, sort of histories. Yeah. What was yours? I think, you know, um, my mom was, uh, first of all, I'm a single mom, you know, and she pretty much looked after her sons, and, you know, um, you know, I'm actually a graphic designer on paper, sure. uh, like my brother as well, and I think, you know, I just didn't want to ride the same way my mom was riding, and I just wanted to make it better, but not only that, some nights we'd, you know, we'd not go uh, with, with food or whatever the case would be, um, um, I went to school, or high, on, well, went to high school yeah. uh, on a school subsidy, and basically, sure. you know, just because my mom couldn't afford the fees, but you know, mama made it, so we're out here. Exactly. Yeah, and you're working. So, you're working so hard. Yeah, I think you know when you when you love what you do, you know, mm. you pretty much uh, put everything you got into it. Mm. And I think um, you know uh, when you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. So whether it be you're going to be a doctor, a lawyer, whatever it may be that you decide you want to do, and that's your passion, then go for it. So people see like you know you know. Uh, the industry, the music industry or the entertainment industry, they think it's, you know, all glitz and glam. But when you get here, it's actually the hardest part to maintain this kind of level. And I think, you know, even like a show like this is really of its stature. So yeah. even being on this set is still hard work. 
you know, yeah. and most people just see you on TV. And, and my dream was always to be like the people that's on TV because they look like they have an easy life. No. But until they leave this set, it becomes <laughs> real, yeah. right? We recently had someone who came yeah. into our, our loft to just a job shadow for it, but she said, sure. wow, I thought that all the TV presenters were like the big thing. Yeah. I big ups to the crew for all the hard work that goes into putting Absolutely. a show together. Yeah. So I think, you know, when, when people see, you know, us on like this box, mm. um, you know, they get a perception that it's easy, that, you know, you can just make money easy mm. and that kind of stuff. And it's like, oh, look at their job. It's so easy. They're just on TV for like two and a half hours hours or whatever the case may be and that's their life mm -mm. but you know we still got to pay bills we still got to pay electricity we still got to pay gas and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff so but I think just because you know we love what we do and we make it work for us yeah. um, you know and we create a lifestyle and because we want to live this lifestyle in a certain way, uh, we've obviously worked, we obviously worked for that yeah. lifestyle. And most people don't know that. So, you know, people think, well, we just get it yeah. easy. Mm. No ways. From that, that was always the first question yeah. that people ask. And the second question they're going to ask is, well, how do I get there? So what is the, what is the entry point? And you're very passionate about young people and growing them into that space. And like you said, it's not easy. And you've had so many interests, b-boying and sure. being on your TV <laughs> and now like this massive DJ name. I mean, I mean, uh, you know, when we, when we started out, uh, and that was pretty much our Break. I mean, we were already yeah. break dancing before the actual, uh, you know, the Yo TV show, which was Big Breakfast mm. on the weekends, mm. and that we had to be there at four in the morning to start at well, so we had to be there at five to start at six. Sure. And I mean, if you're playing, a, if you're doing a gig the night before, you know, you're having minimal sleep. Mm. So um, when we got offered the position, uh, you know, we said, "Cool, let's do it." But there was one condition: we had to do it for free for one year. Sure. And we okay. said, well, you know what? Let's do it because the vision that we're going to build uh, will set us up for the next 10, yeah. 20 years. Mm. And I mean, some of us saw it, but I was pretty much the one that said, guys, let's do this and let's go for it and let's put all our efforts in and let's put in all the hard work mm. so that when, you know, when, we, you know, when we're ready to move on from this platform, mm. uh, all the doors will be open. And that's yeah. what people sort of see. They just want to get like an in, you know? Yes. And, uh, and Someone to say, assign you. Yeah, Damn. like, I'm going to sign you. And, yeah. you know, for me, right now, looking for young talent is just pretty much, you know, how a good friend of mine, Sifo, he actually helped us, yes. you know, onto the show. And he just saw what we were doing. But it was months before that we had actually met. Yeah. And because of our, you know, professionalism as a breakdance crew, being on time, all these little things mm. add up to, you know, the invitation. Well, so let's use these guys because yes. they've got business ethic. And mm. that's the most important thing when, you know, when you, when you come into this space. And it's so easy to lose a job and, you know, create a job yeah. for yourself. So, but you, you also had mentors in that space. I mean, look at yeah. Reddy D. I mean, the guy, right. I get to work with that guy all the time. What a talent. Yeah. And he also taught you things. 100%, you know, uh, because we, got, we had two groups. Uh, you know, create one uh, super crew. Uh, well, we had Static B-Boys and O2-1 B-Boys, mm. uh, you know, pretty much join forces. So we had, you know, a, a you know, power team in Joburg and a power team in Cape Town come together. And obviously, you know, having the mentorship of, you know, guys from Prophets of the City, which is DJ Ready D, DJ yeah. Azul, mm. um, you know, they sort of been here already. I mean, they pioneered South African hip hop mm -hmm. and it was only for us to take it further. And how yeah. we use it will be, you know, to our benefit. And most people miss that part. You know, once yeah. you get mentored by someone, you're only doing, you're only copying and pasting. But mm. the idea is to take it to the next level. Exactly. And I think, you know, for me, you know, you know, getting young talent right now, I think that's for, that's my sort of, you know, passing down the torch or passing yes. down the baton. And I think most people don't like doing that yes. because they either intimidated or mm -hmm. scared of what's about, a, you know, what's oh, about to are they going to do better than I'm going to do? And it's that whole issue. Yeah. But your recent collab just disproved all of that. I mean, yeah. talk me through the track. I mean, Quest, Provo, all the big names Woo. you can think of in the scene. Um, Was it not intimidating being on set with all these guys and trying to balance everyone's egos? Everyone wants their own thing out of it? I've worked with uh, Reason before. We did a, uh, a song called Switch. Mm -hmm. uh, I did a song with uh, Questa called Kings of Tomorrow. Yeah. And this is before, like, you know, award season for them. Mm. Before, like, you know, hip hop is getting such a big name for them. Mm. Provo, on the other hand, we've always been around each other in the each other spaces. Yeah. I mean, you know, he's obviously now, you know, really just killing, you know, the, the other talent show. And I mean, as a presenter, I mean, like, he doesn't have to prove himself anymore yes. or rap anymore. Yes. But because he's such a good artist and because he has a ta he's a talented, you know, uh, writer, script writer, he's a talented rapper, you know, he can freestyle off the top of his head, you know, make up, you know, full song, right? You're just sitting here and dropping like 16 bars, which is like 16 bars of music, sure. um, you know, just off the top of his head. And I think because he's such a professional and he's always known that and he kept it that way since, you know, he was on other TV shows trying to get into the game. Mm. And, uh, you know, and we just, like I said, let's bring in the OG. Yeah. And because of the collaboration from, you know, and I did another song called Where It Go, I found a, a lane that I can follow and it's always been my lane to get OGs, present rappers, and future rappers, mm. right, on one song, which means that I'm crossing 
all, all barriers, barriers. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. So, and it's never been done before. So I sort of, you know, found that lane. And I think also, you know, big ups to Tumi Molokane mm. from Tumi in the Volume. Um, you know, he also said like, yo, you're going to be that DJ that everyone's going to come to where, right. where they can pretty much come and share their talent or expose their talent on another yeah. level. Yeah. Not for, you know, the clubs, but more for the craft and more exactly. for the art. I said this so many times before that uh, producers, this is your year. Like 2016 is going to be yeah. the year of the producer and the DJ. So this is, that might be about rap music, but this is not a rap. <laughs> We're not done here. Right. Now, I want to know what you guys think at home. So if you want to tweet us afternoon chat or find us on Facebook, Afternoon Express. We're living the hip hop. We're living the hip hop here on Afternoon Express. When we return, we get started in the kitchen and we'll be on the couch and hear more from DJ Switch. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, if you've just joined us, we've just gotten started in the kitchen and we're about to make our delicious weekend breakfast. So where do we begin? So we're going to begin here with our bechamel. So that is our French cheese white sauce. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're going to start by just melting a little bit of butter in okay. here. I've never been able to get that white sauce right. It's the one that you've used in a lasagna as well. Yes. Okay, I've got That's no exactly it. Like and that. I think that it's a good base for any, any recipe, so... Yeah. This is actually the first recipe that I, I learned in culinary school, so I think that this is oh, know, yeah? good for a okay, lot of good. stuff. Because I've tried a few, there's a few different variations, but uh, like all this of is them your I found basic, quite basic difficult. <laughs> <laughs> so there we've got some melted butter in there. We're mm -hmm. going to go in with some flour. So at this point, you just want to actually stir the pot quite well. You can see how it's coming together. Yeah. This is when you get that nutty flavour in okay. the sauce. Okay. So from there, we're going to go in with milk. So those are your three basic ingredients. Let me just stir while you do yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, now you're going to get all those lumps out. So sometimes I actually like to switch over to a whisk, if you want to. Yeah, because the lumps, I mean, that's maybe the part that I go wrong. Yeah, there we go. My white sauce ends up looking like, a bit like cottage cheese, usually. <laughs> so you can see that colour. Okay, that's actually like that. a blonde roux. So you want it to actually get that like slight brownish colour. OK, you're going to have to take me way back to the beginning. What is a roux? So a roux is basically when you put your flour and your butter together and you okay. make that kind of crumbly look. Okay. And then you add your liquid, so in this case, it's milk. So you can see how it's thickening up now. OK, well. come, let's swap. Okay. <laughs> I'm not Madonna Mars. There we go. <laughs> that was intense. And I still didn't get any clumps out of there. OK, we are still going. We're going to just put the heat up a little bit. OK. Once we do all of that, you can see, we, and then you keep just adding the milk okay. to it. OK, I'll whisk. OK, there we go. I'm going to switch again. So no, you that. see, this is where I go wrong. Because, look, it's still lumpy. You get, yeah, it's I've about just three keep to on. four minutes that we literally are just going to keep... I mean, did no one going. think of putting this in a blender <laughs> before putting it in a pot? That's actually... You might have grown onto something, actually. Hey, hey. <laughs> Chef Genie. <laughs> um, I'm going to keep yeah, going with you this. Can, I've lost interest already. <laughs> it happens. Okay. okay, so four. I can throw the ingredients okay, in there for we go. you. Okay. So that's nutmeg. Okay. We've done ground nutmeg here, which is a traditional, but you could do whole nutmeg, which mm. is great when you just grate it. It's really, really Lovely. a great ingredient for it. Okay, I'm going to turn this a little bit up. From there, we're going to add a little bit of mustard to this. Okay, that is my favourite mustard. That's really? the best one. Yeah. Okay. All the others are a bit of a waste of time. That, <laughs> that's real mustard. I like right the there. English mustard powder, actually. I feel like I can add that to quite a few things. Really? Yeah. Um, and then, I of course... That. I love the the, the bumpiness of it, the texture. Cheese. In the cheese sauce. More cheese, all cheese, every day. Go. You can see how that's all oh. coming together. Okay. There you go. Okay, now that you've thrown the cheese in, the consistency is a bit better. Yeah, it's changing. You can see there. Oh, okay. There we go. You can add a bit of salt and pepper to it. Not always needed. Here we've got okay. our really done one. Okay. So. <laughs> So because you had your We had already, already done one. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually perfect <laughs> for um okay, yeah, I'll so bring the well the breakfast at the end of it. You know yeah. What I mean? Oh yeah, exactly. Okay. So Well you need to exercise if you're gonna eat this much. I think so. Oh, okay, amazing. Look, Ma did it. <laughs> so okay. brilliant. We're gonna go over here and we're actually gonna start assembly. So from there, we've got our uh, bread, which you've actually lightly toasted. Okay. That's just because you want something to hold the sauce while it's on the bread so that it doesn't get too soggy. Okay. So I've just um, kind of sprayed and cooked the, okay. the sheet. If you can just turn that down a little bit. And then I'm going to do about four of these rather. <laughs> so we'll go in with some ham. So we've got beach smoked ham here, but traditionally it's gypsy, it's pepper ham, it's anything that's, yeah. you know, this kind of consistency. I wouldn't do it with salami or something like that, 
but this is Why definitely... Why not? Salami's amazing. I would throw salami over that ham. <laughs> We're it's doing the Portuguese three, in me coming out. Three types of ham, <laughs> yeah, maybe. Three types of ham, three types of cheese. You never okay. know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's get decadent here. <laughs> then we're going to leave some for the top as well. Okay. See? And then must have so then that. Do you want a dollop of this yes, somewhere? Yes, please. Okay. So I'm actually going to put the tops on here. Okay. And then we're going to dollop that on top. Just one little, one little scoop. There we go. Oh, we can go more than we that, can, surely. Like, go for it. Yeah, okay. And then I'm still going to take this and smooth it out. Okay, then what? There we go. And then we're just going to put some of the cheese on top. Amazing. And then we're going to grill it. Amazing. This is absolutely, absolutely delicious. We should have actually made this last weekend when it was Bastille Day. <laughs> but uh, all you need to do is visit our website, afternoonexpress.co.za, for this delicious recipe. And you could be making a tasty breakfast this weekend with us. So over to you, Dan. I swear I heard categorically that Jeannie said in the kitchen that the more cheese in the kitchen, the better. I think that gives me more permission to do more jokes in the future. Why doesn't it? We've got Switch with us on the couch today, and he's our guest of honor. Dude, we've is spoken it? quite a lot about all your collabs, all the songs, and, and the sort of yeah. growing up of your, your career. But I want to talk about how you're trying to open up the industry and also talk about this co-signing business because it's all, right. all new to me. How are you trying to do all of all this? All right, cool. So, um, you know, when you get a co-sign from, a, a, you know, a, an established artist, it's, so, it's almost like they're opening the gate for you or like they're passing the torch yeah. onto you and whatever you do with that you can either put it out or you can keep it burning you know what okay. I mean so um, you know with what I'm doing right now is I'm um, you know I'm opening up doors to new artists and you know whatever they use from this platform because we are both gonna be boosting each other you know yeah. whether it be female or male um, you know like you know working with the likes of Nasty C, Youngster, Shane Eagle and now Kittini um, you know, these are all young guys and present guys who are breaking into the scene. And, and you know, for me, just giving them a cosign, um, I'm opening up doors, whether you're from Cape Town, whether you're from Durban, or whether you're from Johannesburg, yeah. everyone's about to know who these guys are. Because yeah. the reception that I've been getting from, you know, just from these last two songs has been absolutely amazing. Yes. Because, I mean, uh, you know, like the people in Joburg, they don't know who Youngster is from Cape Town. And like the people in, uh, you know, Johannesburg, don't know, well, from Cape, Cape Town, don't know, who, <laughs> don't know who Shane Eagle is. Yeah. And and, you know, yet these guys have established themselves in both cities, mm. you know, and I think that's just amazing, to, you know, just to, you know, especially because the internet's so fast. You know, uh, you can just post up something today and everybody knows about it tomorrow. Exactly. So, you know, we should use this, you know, as a platform because if radio doesn't play me, then I've got TV to go to, so you make a music video. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that if you go make a, a song and you shoot a music video, that it's going to get played. Yeah. So then if TV doesn't play me, then I've got the internet. Yes. And... Everybody has access to the internet, right? So most people rather buy data as opposed to airtime. Mm. And Wi-Fi spots are everywhere. So anybody's there accessible. There are no limitations, basically. 100%. Do what you need to do. And I think it's the first time I've seen an artist collaborate with so many different names. You've mentioned right. the idea of going with the OGs, the current stars, and, and the new and guys the features, that have broken yeah. into the industry. But uh, I saw, you, speaking about the internet, that you, you, you really made a, a remix of your own song, right. Now or Never. And that's also as controversial because you've got new artists that are coming on, yeah. but some of the old ones are staying. Why remix a track so quickly? All right, so first of all, it's the first time I've ever done it. You know, I think I, you know, I chewed a, a bit too much than I can actually chew. <laughs> Um, so there's 12 artists on one track. Sure. The track is actually 8 minutes 40 seconds and it's actually absolutely amazing that you know the, the stations have been playing the, the full length of the song and be, just because of the, the content yeah. that's on the song and the excitement from beginning to end. Yeah. Uh, you know, it starts with a pro and ends with a pro verb. You know, <laughs> so um, it's, 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 it's very cool to have legends, you know, open the track and end the track yeah. uh, and then everything else in the, in, in the middle yeah, is all mixed Yeah, you cut like a minute out, you cut a whole rap out of it. 100%, yeah, you so. know, so we've got Youngster, we've got Kid Teen, we've got Pretty Ugly, we've got Shane Eagle, Big Star Johnson, Zakra from Durban, uh, we've got Sia Shazi from Soweto, we've got Pro Kid, formerly, well, formerly known as Pro Kid Pro, uh, and we've got Pro Verb, we've got Black Liz from Pretoria, uh, Ginger Troll, um, so if I have, have forgot, oh, Reason, right. Oh my gosh. I just gotta keep, <laughs> But there's know, a reason why you forgot that, get it? Uh, what? <laughs> it's fine. There you go. So, I I think, you know, just, um, you know, having that, I think, you know, uh, you know, you actually cutting across all, uh, you know, boundaries yes. in terms of age. So you can, you know, play a song for a 10 year old kid up to like a 40 year old person. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, everybody can relate across the board Insane. and they can actually understand that the craft is, it's much more yeah. than just, you know, popping bottles and girls and all this kind of stuff. That's not, the, you yes. know, the picture that, every, well, that's a picture that everybody sees. Yeah. But when it comes to the actual craft, Nobody hears it. Sure, with all those big names, I think it must have been quite an intimidating process. So I'd actually like to hear Shane Eagle joins us on the line right now. Shane, how are you, man? 
Yeah, yeah, chilling. How you doing? Yeah, yeah, I feel like I should talk like this, but I'm just going to be me, all right? It's the Eagle. <laughs> it's the yeah, Eagle, cool. Mr. Eagle. It's having the show with us today. Let's talk about this collab. I mean, first of all, great track. And uh, at first, before we even get to your collaboration there, I see in the second version of the track, you've mentioned pretty interesting phrases. One of them happens to be uh, something about if you've got gold in your mouth, uh, but you've nothing really much to say. Was that targeted yeah. at somebody specific? Uh, it was, the, the song is referred to whoever feels uncomfortable by the verse and for that person, you know, I said, <laughs> you never say anything with value, but you got gold in your mouth. And hip hop right now is, is more about the aesthetics than what it is about the lyrical content and the subject matter. Yeah. So whoever, if the shoe fits, you know. <laughs> well, that's speaking of which, that's why you got involved in this track as a whole. So what was the process like for you being involved with so many of these names together? And what, are, what, are, what have you yeah. learned from the process? That was a humbling experience, you know, for DJ Switch to call me up. Um, he, I think he got a co-sign from Ricky Rick, you know. So I think the first time Switch ever heard about me was from Ricky or one of the songs that I put out. And he decided to work with me at first. And it was just a blank canvas. There was no one on the song. So I had to dictate or give the direction of the song, you know. So yeah. there was nobody on the song. And Switch sent me the beat. And I was like, wow, this is, this is cool, you know. It's, it's the first time that anyone's actually putting out a real rap song. And I was keen to do it, you know, and so I hit switch back up and I had the hook ready and the verse and then I haven't looked back since. It was humbling, you know, and then yeah. Switch told me that Questa and Reason and Proverb on the song, so I knew I had to bring my A game, you know. Absolutely, yeah, I'm sure. It must have been <laughs> one, one of those processes of knowing about the big names that are on that track. Well, Shane, I know things are frigging blowing up for you at the moment, so congrats on, on your opening act that you did not long ago for J. Cole. Really, really exciting right. stuff, uh, brilliant performance, and hopefully see you more and more on our TV screens and listening to you on our radios. Yeah, definitely, man. I appreciate sure. that. Thanks all for joining us up. on the show. Thanks for joining us. What a legend, man. And yeah. you've worked with all of these different names. One of the other ones that I really like your collab with is with the Youngster. Because, I mean, yeah. I, I spend a lot of my time in Cape Town with my radio show being here. And he's yeah. all over our, our station. And really is, people have said that he's the only guy who stayed true to rap. Yeah, I think, you know, it's because of, you know, his authenticity. You know, authenticity. Mm. There you go. Yeah. Such a big word. It's the <laughs> rap game, okay? So, um, you know, I think it's because of that. And, you know, he's always, like, saluting Weinberg and, mm. you know, and, and he's a cop start something. And, you know, he just sort of, you know, brings that, you know, that, you know, we've got so much in South Africa to offer in terms of our race, face, where we come from, our history. And, you know, with the remix, you felt everything on that yeah. if it had to describe the rainbow nation that would be the track yeah. uh, in the rap scene i would say yeah. um you know where you're hearing vernacular you're hearing different kinds of verses you know uh bilinguals and all that kind of stuff and that's what makes it so exciting you know i mean even like you know getting these cosigns like there's another kid on the song his name is kid Tini. Mm -hmm. um you know he's uh he's actually 18 years old he resides in centurion pretoria um we've never met him we what? don't know we've and never he's on the met track. him is on the track, we got a co-sign from DJ Vigilante and DJ Savvy, big ups to uh, those DJs. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I went to go listen to this kid and I was like, wow, he's kind of dope. Did you have him online? Uh, I only chatted him on Twitter, only. Sheesh. And we said, cool, I think we're going to use you. Um, we had to go through the logistics and he's on the remix. Sure, so, man. you know, getting a co-sign is so, so important because uh, it cuts the process of, you know, still having to listen to, you know, 10 other people. When you can listen to one person, when someone says like, hey, put this guy on, he's really mm -hmm. gonna be nice. Mm -hmm. um, you know, sometimes also when you're at certain events and maybe, you know, you hear someone there and you go and listen to that person, it's good to actually go and listen to that person or you see the person perform live and you can be like, hey, let's work together yeah. or whatever the case may be because some, most times uh, people get picked up after a performance yes. as opposed to just dropping a video and, you know, Know, you're the next big thing and you know that's the amazing thing of what like some of these guys are going through um, Nasty C once again I met him after a performance in Durban and uh, you know I just you know I was like there's something about Nasty C that I've never seen in such young, yeah. in a such a young body. Yeah, and it seems to be that all the real essences of becoming the next big thing or the big names right. work hard and meet the right types of people, be mentored, and be humble enough to want to learn. Absolutely. Switch, it's been so cool chatting to you, man. Thanks Thank for you joining so us much, man. Daniel. <laughs> I'm G, people. I'm G. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. <laughs> when we return, I'm going to be chatting to the crazy, weird, and wonderful Justin Ray.
welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, he's the new kid on the comedy block, and with only four years on the scene, he's already a regular at the Cape Town Comedy Club. And this year, he is on the bill for the Cape Town Funny Festival at the Baxter Theatre. Joining us in the loft is Justin Ray Stoffels. Hello, Tini, how are you? Welcome. Well, so wonderful you to have you here. Me. Thank you for having so me. So good to have you. Now, I want to get to know you a little bit more, because, I mean, in just four short years, you've done so ex ex exceptionally well. Tell us about young Justin. You're from Grayton. You grew yes, up in Grayton. Yes, yes, I'm from Grayton, um, which is also, if I want to um, tell people where I'm from, they won't know where Grayton is. Yeah. So I normally mention um, Karen Korki, you know, the idol <laughs> singer. She's from Grabo or the Apple Farms, you know, yeah. Apple and Wine Farmlands. So I'm from Grayton, which is just a two hours from outside of Cape Town. Exactly. Um, but it's it's a small town and not a lot is going on there at the moment. So. But the beauty about Grayton is a lot of people don't, haven't heard of it, but those that mm. do know about Grayton know about Grayton because it is magnificent. It's the most beautiful little town. Yes, it's, it's a beautiful town because, and I was just saying to someone else, I don't know why I moved to Cape Town, because it's so peaceful there. There's no traffic, yes. no Golden Arrow, no Weinberg or nothing like that. <laughs> you just walk to wherever you want, yeah, you know? Exactly. So it's untouched. It's just beauty. Yeah, nature. it is great. So when you were younger, when you, when you were a young boy and you thought, oh, when I grow up, I'm going to be, what was your answer? I've always been creative in terms of um, writing, um, sketching, um, dancing, performing on stage. I've always been the performer, entertainer yeah. type. But I never knew it was going to be comedy. Until like four years back, I was working at a restaurant, but the theme for the restaurant, the name of the restaurant is called the Missing Sock. So your uniform is you wear missing so like odd socks to the job. <laughs> you mustn't have the same socks, matching socks on. Okay. So from working at that restaurant, um, and it wasn't the best restaurant always, you know, because they focused more on the entertaining side than the food side. Yeah. So we didn't have the best chefs in the kitchen, so the people had to wait like 40 minutes, an hour for their food. And then it was my job to keep them busy, just keep <laughs> them there, make all yeah. the jokes, where are you from, what's your name, why do you speak like that, you know, all yeah. the... But listen, the, you obviously did really well at the, at the Missing Sock. If, I'm, if I stand corrected, the Missing Sock is in the UK. And you actually received quite a bit of media attention from working there. Yeah. Well, explain what, what happened with your yes, missing sock. Yes, I used to be the graphic designer at the Missing Sock as well. So I did graphic designing, I designed like the, the logos yeah. and stuff there as well. So not just as barman or waiter, I did graphic design and I was in the kitchen as well. Yeah. So um, I got, um, and as, when, I, as, when I work as a waiter, um, people always come back to the restaurant and give you compliments. Where's that friendly guy? They never compliment the food. It's always, where's the friendly guy? I know you got nice omelets, but where's the friendly guy? Okay. So they're always looking for the entertaining guy. And, exactly. And that's where I realized I'm a people's person as well. So yeah. that's where it started for me. Okay, I'm a people's person. I have the same energy as Eddie Murphy on stage, off stage. So why not go for it? Why not? Well, I want to actually have a look and see what you are like okay. on stage. So, okay. you, so you're going to be performing at the Funny Festival. Yes. And we went along to go and have a look and see just how good our great and Freddie Mur Murphy is. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> you guys. Well, I don't need to explain now, uh, aka A Thousand Ways to Die. <laughs> we can't even meditate to explain it. We have to meditate with one eye open. <laughs> we can't even have an out of body experience to explain it. Because if you come back, your body will be gone. Who <laughs> are you going to call Ghostbusters? It was a great show from start to finish. It was cool to see Justin Ray do his stuff. It's, there's always good advice for up and coming comedians trying to get into stand up comedy. It's just make yourself known. We've got pretty good infrastructure all over the country for young comedians who want to break into the business. Discovering uh, top South African comedians is a bit of a, a, an overstatement as such. You know, by virtue of having this festival since 1997, a lot of comics have come through the festival and don't get the opportunity usually to play such a big audience, which makes you better anyway, firstly. Secondly, is that uh, Justin sent me, I didn't know Justin beforehand, he sent me a, 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 a tape of his, it was... Re really, really poor quality, <laughs> and I couldn't understand what he was saying, but I was really impressed with the audience response. And I phoned uh, Kurt Schoenrode at the Cape Town Comedy Club, and I said, do me a favor, I like what this guy does. He says, yeah, he's a, a name for the future. He says, can you put him on for me? And he did do, 
and um, I was blown away. I was blown away with his audience, with the response from the audience. I know that the, the rest of his material and this, he will develop as he goes along, but there's certainly a lot of potential there. Longevity in this business, I think for me, from my own perspective, I just, I wake up every morning and I look in the mirror and I realize why I'm still here because you know, I've just been blessed with these amazing looks and then phenomenal talent. And when you put the two together, you're just going to last forever. My words for, for Justin as a newcomer would be to, he must try and break up with his girlfriend really soon because um, he's clearly going to do well and he's going to make money. The relationship will have many problems, so he should, he should leave her now. <laughs> now. That was so lovely. I mean, what do you feel when you see such um, amazing top-level performance? That's actually crazy for me because I wasn't supposed to be on the Jai Funny Festival lineup. I wasn't supposed to be there at all. It's like um, Eddie said, I just sent him like a two-minute club, poor quality, in yeah. an underground club where I did comedy. And the response was, it's always, I've always had some great responses from yeah. the audience. But, you know, that night he was there, I was just performing, you know. Well, let's discuss Eddie Kassar, because he's the most amazing guy. And you actually say he's responsible for your career, basically. Yeah, yeah. What, so you, did you just hear his name and think, um, let me just send him a demo tape? Or? Yeah, that's the thing. Um, Cape Town comedians, we all know each other. You know, yeah. like underground comedians know the big names. Yeah. So you always listen to the big names and they always talk about Eddie Kassar. I performed for Eddie Kassar, I performed. So I'm like, wait a minute, I always, always, always want to be on that list of performing for Eddie Kassar or yes. Eddie Kassar seeing you. So, you know, I just thought, you know, okay, let me give it a go to either a yes or a no. So luckily it was a yes. And I emailed him three o'clock on a Saturday morning and I didn't expect him to come back to me. You know, who emails someone Saturday and three? No, Eddie does. I've gotten a lot of emails from him. <laughs> Thank you so much. And I wish you the best of luck. We're definitely going to be keeping an eye on you. Thank you. And, uh, and on the stage as well, in the Funny Festival. Now, if you want to catch Justin in action, then you are in luck. Because we are giving away uh, a sets of double tickets to the Cape Town Funny Festival at the Baxter worth 340 Rand. Simply SMS the keyword express your name and city to double three seven two eight. T's and C's apply and can be found on afternoonexpress.co.za. Uh, Tanilla, over to you. Yes, coming up after the break, South Africa, I'm so excited because maybe you could be winning yourself a home right here on Afternoon Express when our home starts just after this. Winner home on Afternoon Express, where three design contestants are turning three empty properties at Valdivia Estate in the Cape Islands into dream homes using finishes provided by Caesar Stone and Plascon. Vote for your favourite and you could win. Today is the big day that we reveal the final products of our design contestants' kitchens. But before we get to those, let's take a closer look at a collaboration between Minentle, One Design and Grass to create his unique kitchen. Our kitchens have changed over the years is that uh, the kitchen used to just be a workspace somewhere stuck in the corner of the house, whereas now it is an extension of the home itself. Families very rarely these days sit at a dining room table, so lots of uh, islands, breakfast nooks, eating areas are incorporated into the kitchen itself. And what people neglect most is actually what makes a kitchen move, and that's the hardware. There's a lot of focus on the outside look of the kitchen, on the design, on the colours, um, yet the hardware is the, the thing that they skimp on and that's where a lot of people make the mistake. When you choose your hardware, it needs to be a good brand, a quality brand, and that'll make your kitchen last longer. In this home here, what we've tried to do is take uh, pieces of furniture, freestanding, and amalgamate them with the built-in cupboards, which is a modern take, and blends them with the rest of the lounge and dining area. This technology has changed kitchen design. Your, your kitchen becomes more practical. You're using optimal spaces, you're using all your corners. Um, from that point of view, that's how the, the technology in our hardware has changed the look, the feel, and the design of, of, of the kitchen. With the technology that we use in a kitchen like this, it makes it extremely easy for anyone using the kitchen uh, to operate. Nice opening and soft closing hinges and drawers, runners, makes it easy to use. And then the integrated appliances that we use aren't just um, something that's an afterthought. It has to be considered in the functionality of the kitchen and the aesthetically pleasing value that it adds to the kitchen. The other system incorporated is the corner solutions. Um, we can store items not used regularly. 
Um, and then we also have the recycling bin systems, the spice pullouts, um, and then also your larder pullouts. There's many varieties of an exposed storage behind glass doors, open floating shelves. It all depends on the environment and uh, it is an extension of the home. It can be modern floating shelves or you can have beveled glass cottage pane doors um, or you can have hanging pots above the island, something different just to bring in a little bit of copper or steel to break up the monotony of stone and timber. With our runner systems you can go very wide, you can go up to 1200 millimetres and that also then gives you a option of going with a 60 kilogram version and that allows you to optimise the packing space in your drawers. The contestants have incorporated international trends by using stone in specific ways. So what Manantle has done is demarcated an, a breakfast nook eating area as well as an accent over the side of the island uh, with stone and there's something different and adds a different touch. What Rudolf has done is brought in a minimal look with an industrial look, slightly rustic, and then using lighting in specific areas under counter, strip lighting, and brought an overseas trend into something that I find is quite uniquely South African. Well, now it's time to find out if our design contestants took this to heart to create beautiful modern kitchens that are both functional and on trend. Let's head over to Valduvi. The kitchen countdown is complete. Let's go see what creativity has been unleashed. Joanne is up first. Joanne, how's it? Hi. Neighbor, I came Welcome. to ask for a cup of sugar. Yes, I have these sticks for you. <laughs> Maybe not a cup, but a stick of sugar will do. This place looks absolutely amazing. Really, really proud of you. Talk me through how you've managed to bring your ideas to life. So I went for a very clean uh, layout. We have two panels here of cabinets, and the island is very practical. It's in the middle and it works very well. And then I went for something different and dramatic. Uh, I went for the dark cabinets and to contrast that I brought in the white Caesar stone and then I've also added white appliances just to finish it off and then the last element that I love is the black tap that matches with all the other plumbing fixtures in the house. In the previous challenge the judges said that you've been quite minimalist in all your other rooms and I wanted to see some bravery come out of you. What do you think Ark is going to say about this space? I think Ark will like the sleekness of this design. It's a bit different to the other understated spaces that I created. The shiny copper elements that are hidden here and there but you can still see them if you're sitting at the right angle just to add to the glamorous Valdivy lifestyle. And I think Ark will dislike the difference, the dark the dark kitchen with a white contrasting Caesar stone. Simon's going to want to know how you've added value to this property and increased its marketability. How have you added value to the property? The elements I love in this kitchen is the feature wall behind me that is made of Caesar stone and it's permanently fixed here so you can't remove it. Also the snake appliances, you can't go wrong with that in any space. If there's one thing that I've learned from my discussions with Anne, it's that colour and mood are intrinsically linked. You've gone for a very nice dark feel here, and when I walked into this kitchen, it just felt like I walked into a chocolate slab. So when I was working with Wood Lab, they suggested I go for, for the dark kitchen because it just adds that dramatic feel that you need in a, in a living area. And in my other spaces, I went for the very white colours, and now in this space, I'm doing the, the opposite. I'm going for dark with a bit of white. Well, even if I do say so myself, you've got a very sweet kitchen. Good luck. Thanks. I'm gonna steal another one, don't tell anyone. <laughs> Man, what a beautiful kitchen, and I hope you loved it too. Minentle is up next, who's got a lot to prove after winning the previous challenge. Minentle, this is such a bold design. I really love it. It's almost like it's in Mint condition. Ah. Tell me what was the inspiration and what is so minently about this spot? What I chose to do is go for a, a U-shaped um, kitchen and have that one wing relate to the dining area and the lounge because the kitchen is becoming a space that's relative to the rest of the home. So things are now more open plan. But at the same time, I, I chose to keep my storage at the back so that the, this wing is very open. In terms of design, I've incorporated a, an, an integrated dishwasher and I've lifted the drying area so that you have more space on the countertops because I really wanted to create this open space where one can interact with the dining area and the lounge. As the winner of the previous challenge, the judges are keeping a close eye on you. What do you think each judge is going to say about this space? What I think someone will like is how I've included the overhead shelves, which 
maximize the storage and how I've integrated the appliances which adds value to the space. What I would like about this space is the detailing I've gone for with regards to the flooring um, in terms of defining the kitchen as a space but at the same time having this transition detail that links it to the rest of the spaces and taking that up with the paints on the wall just to define the, the kitchen vertically. What they'll also like is my bold use of colour and the materiality of the whole space with the timber and the Caesar stone tops which add um, a contrast of texture but at the same time they all come together with the, with the colour of the paint. Well, Minente, I think it looks fantastic. It's all up to the judges now but I really think you're on a roll. <laughs> Now that is some creative use of Caesar Stone. Our final contestant is Rudolf. Let's go see what he's got cooking in the kitchen. Rudolf, bear, this yeah. place is amazing. Awesome, hey? Thank you, yeah, we were good. expecting you. Celebrating already. Yeah. I'll celebrate yes. with you. <laughs> well done. Yeah, so talk thanks. me through how this all came to life. What were your ideas and how did it all come together? When I briefed Beth in the beginning, I asked her to think about how we can incorporate more traditional um, living, but also have a space where people can be entertained and live around the kitchen. And then we looked at the brief of incorporating very nice make appliances that gives a more traditional look to the space, but also add contemporary light and contemporary fixtures that would actually go with it. So Beth, with all those great ideas, how did you interpret this brief? And the challenge was we had a compact space in which we had to make more open and create an illusion of more space. And here what we did was we used kind of modular units, freestanding, open, some interesting open displays, and we combined all of that to create like a fresh, relaxed feel. All right, so Anne is going to want to ask you about your color scheme in here. You've gone for sort of dark fixtures with a little bit of light. Yes, well, that contradiction between the dark and the light is something that's really excites our interior space. But I also have a popping color of blue. What do you think Ark's thoughts are going to be when they walk into the space and just explore? Ark will really like how we looked at the inside of the cupboard space and compact living and how we can make it more functional with the limited space that we have. Simon's going to want to know how you've added value in this kitchen. We've added it, uh, integrated appliances into the space but also some freestanding units and we also looked at the materials used like the Caesar stone that we incorporated in full slabs and we also cladded the walls in Caesar stone which is great. So Beth how is this kitchen going to stand out? Well I think a lot of people tend to take kitchens and floor to ceiling of units and here we haven't done that we've kind of gone with a modular look it is different it's not keeping in with the safe kind of designs that we all go towards. And your personal favorite thing about this space? For me, it's the island. I think it's beautiful, this beautiful, elegant Caesar stone. And with the open, and you can sit around it, we can actually move it if we wanted to for entertainment. But it's a prep surface and an entertainment for everyone. It caters for all. Well, I'm very impressed, guys. Congratulations, you pulled it off. Thank cheers. you. Cheers. 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 And cheers to you. If you want to win big on Winner Home and Afternoon Express, go to privateproperty.co.za, click on the Winner Home link, and vote for your favorite kitchen. That'll enter you into the grand prize competition to win a home right here at Val de V. Until Monday, when you guys get judged. Ciao, ciao. It's time to see how well our design contestants stuck to budget. Team VC had a projected budget of 81,000 Rand without appliances. Her actual budget spent was 43,200 Rand, so she spent a lot less than planned. Team Real Estate had a projected budget of 56,500 Rand. In the end, they spent 56,449 Rand, which is the closest to budget anyone has stuck to so far. Team L Decoration had a conservative budget of 32,500 Rand and ended up spending only 26,262. Remember that you are also a judge on Winner Home. You have the chance to change one of our design contestants' lives forever. So head over to privateproperty.co.za and vote for your favourite now. Vote for your favourite design contestant's kitchen on privateproperty.co.za and stand a chance of winning a tulip dining chair by guideline to the value of 6,890 Rand. You also automatically get entered into the draw to win one of the three finished apartments valued at over 3 million Rand. Winner Home is proudly brought to you by Private Property in association with Nedbank.
Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now look, it's no joke and it's really no secret that I'm not amazing in the kitchen. But I'm pretty sure that Megan is just about to teach me how to fry an egg. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> is that what's happening? That's here? what's gonna happen. Just a simple frying of an egg. Okay, wow. Which is pretty... I'm pretty sure I can handle this with one hand. But there's actually... Okay. Can I try yeah. it with one hand? Let's do it. Okay, if this doesn't work out, don't okay, judge wait, me. I need to put a little bit of butter Oh, yeah, 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 that part. Okay. <laughs> Could have done that with one as well. <laughs> Look at me, not amateur with two. Okay, let's throw in a lot of butter. <laughs> I'll just pretend I'm clem. Butter <laughs> on everything. <laughs> okay. Butter. Yeah. Just what do I do with okay. that blob? Yeah, like, leave it there. You can. There we, we go. Just cook into the. And we'll just go. There okay. we go. And oh, you can find beautiful. Beautiful. Done. There we go. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay, now no, oh, no, it didn't come out okay, right. Yeah. How do you get the little yellow thing to stay gonna, where it's supposed to be? We're just going to move all of this around so that it looks perfect. Do you see what I mean? Um, there's actually a reason why we do it like this. So we do sunny side up eggs. So with a croque madame, yeah. the whole story behind it is that it's actually the French women always used to wear those beautiful hats. Yes. So sunny side up at the top looks like a hat. So that's why it's a croque madame. Without that, that's a croque monsieur right now. Uh, okay. It's a croque madame. Okay. So we're actually just going to move this a little bit around and just kind of get it up. Don't worry about the oil on my, on my dress, uh, your designer. Sir. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Go. Other way around. I'm just okay. bring that. Okay. Okay, amazing. Okay. Look. Great. Turn that gonna... off. There, there we go. go. They won't know what's going on. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You just cover it in paper. Here yeah. Great. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> this is the perfect step for wife look. <laughs> Breakfast is served, is gentlemen. Oh, I mean, yeah. look at that. Oh, oh, need some. Oh, okay. Thank yeah, you. There we go. Got <laughs> <laughs> the oaks. Thank See? You. We know yes. what's for dinner. She can finally fry an egg. Yay! It's great news. When, well, I can single handedly <laughs> fry an egg. So, if you also want to learn to do the same thing, go to our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. All the recipes and the shopping lists are there. Now, while you're enjoying this delicious, well, while you're enjoying this delicious <laughs> breakfast tomorrow morning, don't miss out on SABC 3's brand new show, Weekend Edition. It's from 6 30 to 9 a.m., Saturday and Sunday mornings. It's amazing. Tomorrow, they've got singer Vusi Nova and guitar. Uh, Loki Rothman or Loki yeah. Rothman on the show and from what I hear the two artists will be collaborating for a very memorable performance and they've also got um, guest chef uh, Sue yes Sue Ann Allen <laughs> to make your food so much more sexy then on Sunday morning they've got a musical performance by Zoe Madija and they'll be chatting to Larita Lerato Chavalala the author of a very controversial new book called The Way I See It which has been all over the news recently and the, the presenters are just amazing and it's such a great show so you That'd definitely don't fun. want to miss it. Yeah, it should be really, really cool. <laughs> Guys, please dish yourselves up. Take one. Yeah, I want Take to know one. what you think of my cooking because <laughs> I've never really gotten rave Jenny. reviews on it. Yeah, I can tell you a good thing uh, that I had a good joke. Just off air, we were chatting and he's like, do you guys just say grace before you eat? At the end of the table. And all this stuff. So we're like, wow. Did the look would make us say grace? I would make you. This is yours, dude. No, 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 You're, the You're the guest. You're the guest. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. You've got such amazing manners and nice eyes. <laughs> you guys are amazing. Thanks for joining us on the show today. Thank I've learned how to be G. She learned how to make an egg. It's all things new on Afternoon Express. Also, in our new time slot. We'll see you next week, same time, same place. Good night. Ciao. Happy eating. Good Bye. Night.